These are the Sunday recommendations for Patreon subscribers for August 26th, 2018. The blog post this week is on the sculpture of William Shakespeare in Central Park by John Quincy Adams Ward. This was New York's salute to Shakespeare on his tercentenary. There's a separate video for that. Second recommendation, F. W. Rookstool's Altar to Liberty in the Greenwood Cemetery, dedicated 1920. This bronze was erected to honor the Battle of Long Island, also known as the Battle of Brooklyn, which took place on August 27, 1776. See the Hamilton Post on the screen for the context of this battle and eyewitness accounts of it. Rookstool, 1853 to 1942, conceived of Minerva as representing war, wisdom, poetry, light, and the family, which is a bit of a stretch for her. She's looking across the harbor, saluting the Statue of Liberty, which you can see there, all the way down there in the lower left corner of the second picture. Rookstool's Liberty is one of those pieces that appeals to me more in concept than in execution, but it's the only full-scale sculpture I know that honors the Battle of Long Island. Also, I tend to avoid modern art and polemical works about it, but if you enjoy that sort of thing, you might enjoy Rookstool's Great Works of Art and What Makes Them Great, published 1925. Here's a sample caption for a Cezanne landscape on the left. Quote, an example of symbolic, sadistic mutilation of nature in landscape painting, end quote. And on Rodin's Danaid, quote, a more or less vulgar, sensation-seeking stunt in marble, justly praised by the few for its clever construction, while its ordinary modeling is overlauded by undiscriminating critics. An example of silly art for art's sake, end of quote. Third recommendation, John Singleton Copley's The Copley Family in the National Gallery, Washington, painted 1776 to 1777. This is a reminder of the other side of the American Revolution. In 1774, 36-year-old John Singleton Copley, who was already highly respected for his portraits of Paul Revere, John Hancock, Samuel Adams, and other prominent Americans, set out for Europe to work and study. When he reached London in 1775, he was joined by his family, who had fled America when hostilities broke out between the colonists and the British. Copley's portrait of his reunited family was the first work he showed at the Royal Academy of Arts. Copley is at the upper left, the viewer. His father-in-law, who owned some of the tea that was spilled into the harbor during the Boston Tea Party, is seated just next to him. His wife, Susanna, embraces their two daughters, two, two younger daughters, and the eldest daughter is standing in front. This infant on Grandpa's lap was probably the Copley's youngest son, Clark, who had been left in Boston because he was too delicate to bring. Can you imagine just leaving an infant on the other side of the Atlantic during war? But it was dangerous. Of course, it was dangerous in Boston, too. Clark died in January 1776. Copley perhaps left the infant in the painting because his wife was expecting another child by the time the news of Clark's death reached them. And for more on this painting, there's a publication uh, by the National Gallery that you can look up on the Patreon site. Fourth recommendation. Anna Hyatt Huntington's Torchbearers, 1955, this copy, 1964. To me, this represents passing the torch of civilization, and that makes it one of Huntington's most moving sculptures. This aluminum sculpture, it's quite large actually, is tucked away on the grounds of the Stevens Institute in Hoboken, New Jersey. And when you visit it, you should make a point of going a bit further east on the campus and you will have a terrific view of the Manhattan skyline across the Hudson River. That's all for this week. 
If you'd like to join the free Sunday recommendations list, visit the URL on screen or just email me. You can support me starting $5 a month or just follow me, that's free, on Patreon for videos, art-related recommendations, notes on upcoming art exhibitions, and much more. Also check out dianderantiwriter.com for hundreds of posts on sculpture, painting, music, poetry, Central Park, and my other obsessions. Thanks for listening.